One of the reasons that the story of Hezekiah resonates is because the experiences Hezekiah had reflect experiences that any believer, indeed every believer, will have. It begins with a decision to make a commitment to the Lord and enacting that commitment, establishing a new covenant in our relationship with God. Because when we become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we accept the terms of a new covenant, a relationship with God, based on the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the case of the New Testament, with God placing his Holy Spirit in the believer to teach us the way of the Lord. So in Second Chronicles 29, we saw Hezekiah making such a new covenant with his people. They opened the temple, offered the sacrifices for cleansing, pointing to the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and rejoiced and sang praises to the Lord. It happened all very suddenly. It was all very quick. The people rejoiced afterwards. We continue in Second Chronicles chapter 13. Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel. For the king and his leaders and all the assembly in Jerusalem had agreed to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep, keep it at the regular time, because a sufficient number of priests had not consecrated themselves, nor had the people gathered together at Jerusalem. And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly, so they resolved to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, since they had not done it for a long time in the prescribed manner. Then the runners went throughout all Israel and Judah with the letters from the king and his leaders, and spoke according to the command of the king. Children of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Then he will return to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. Do not be like your fathers and your brethren, who trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, so that he gave them up to desolation, as you see. Now do not be stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord, and enter his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brethren and your children will be treated with compassion by those who led them captive, so that they may come back to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn his face away from you if you return to him. So the runners passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh as far as Zebulun, but they laughed at them and mocked them. Nevertheless, some from Asher, Manasseh and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also, the hand of God was on Judah to give them singleness of heart to obey the command of the king and the leaders at the word of the Lord. Now many people a very great assembly gathered at Jerusalem to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month. They arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and they took away all the incense altars and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they slaughtered the Passover lambs on the fourteenth day of the second month. The priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought the burnt offerings to the house of the Lord. They stood in their place according to their custom, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood received from the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the assembly who had not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites had charge of the slaughter of the Passover lambs for everyone who was not clean, to sanctify them to the Lord. For a multitude of the people, many from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves, yet they ate the Passover, 
contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the good Lord provide atonement for everyone who prepares his heart to seek the Lord, the Lord God of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. So the children of Israel, who were present at Jerusalem, kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days, with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. And Hezekiah gave encouragement to all the Levites, who taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they ate throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings, and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. Then the whole assembly agreed to keep the feast another seven days, and they kept it another seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah king of Judah gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep, and the leaders gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. The whole assembly of Judah rejoiced. Also the priests and Levites, all the assembly that came from Israel, the sojourners that came from the land of Israel, and those who dwelt in Judah. So there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, to heaven. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me. A little fire spreads quickly. Hezekiah, having a zeal for the Lord and urging the priests and Levites to get the temple in order, is then able to launch a renewal, a revival, through not only Judah, but also Israel as well. At this time, Israel had just been overrun by Assyria and many of the people taken into captivity. And so they were in a very weak state. And in this weak state, Hezekiah sends a message to them. Come back to the Lord God, and he will bless you. Come and worship him. And while many of them mock, because they have not thought about serving the Lord God of Israel for many years, yet some of them remember, this is the God of Israel, and come to worship him. The point is made that they had not been cleansed. They were not living holy lives, lives according to the law of Moses. But they are received anyway. And Hezekiah prays for them. May the good Lord provide atonement for everyone who prepares his heart to seek the Lord, the God of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And this is a strong principle, that the Lord receives those who come to him. We don't have to get our act in order first. But it follows. And so they come and the Lord will then help us get our lives back into order. And with all this revival and many people coming, the priests and Levites who had grown slack because there was little interest in the Lord are suddenly caught short and they're embarrassed that they're not ready to receive the people. We need to always be ready for we don't know when the opportunity will come for us to teach the good word of the Lord. For they don't just come together for sacrifice, but they come together to get their lives sorted out. And the key part of that is learning how the Lord wants us to live. And that's why we need to meditate on the scriptures on a daily basis. Our particular circumstances are different from that of others, But when we understand the principles of godly living, then we will know how to respond to the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And so everyone is invited. The invitation goes out. Some reject it. Some receive it and come. Those who come are received and participate in the feast with great joy, with singing. They even extend the feast another seven days. Hezekiah giving encouragement to all the Levites who taught the good knowledge of the Lord because these people had not thought about the ways of the Lord for many years. Indeed, it's over 250 years since they had had a Passover like this one.